All right, y'all. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the comments that were made on that video, Our House Shots Killing Bowling. Uh, I'm just going to go through a few of them and kind of respond to some of them. Um, some are positive, some are negative. Um, and let this just be, this is just how it is. You know, I'd agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. <laughs> so don't take that serious. I'm just kidding. Kind of, sort of, not really. But anyway. Mm. All right, the first one up here, it says, ask what the sport of bowling most needs right now. Bowlers. If it's not fun, they're not bowling. The house shot being easier will encourage everyone from grandma on down to bowl and have a reasonable chance of keeping it on the lane. Leave the sport patterns to the high rollers and, as you said, tournaments where prize money are for a certain level if it is involved. If a certain league wants the sport pattern, let them vote on it. Now, I don't disagree with you. Here's the problem. The mass majority of people that go bowling are people that have zero clue. They don't care what is put on the lanes. And that's what most people don't understand. Most people think bowlers as league bowlers, people who actually understand the game a little bit or have some kind of basic thought about what the game is about and how to do things they actually are the ones that think they are the majority when they are the super minority league bowlers are the minority in this game right now you know the open play recreational bowlers are the majority of the game so you could put one-to-one -one patterns out there for open play bowlers and none of them are going to know the difference the only ones that are going to know the difference are the league bowlers and they would be the only ones to complain who bring in way less money than any of the recreational bowlers. So that argument I don't agree with. The only reason I would say I agree with it is if you are trying to keep leagues, which you know most centers are trying to keep leagues, um, definitely keep it fun, keep it easier for those types of leagues. Now, if it's a bigger money league, then you need to probably do things a little bit differently. But then again, you have a problem where you know, people complain if one team is better than the other. And I think that's where bowling in some aspects has kind of took a dive in the kitty litter box because you got people that are complaining that think just because they're out on the lanes, they should have, you know, just as good a chance to win as the best bowlers on in the league. Why? The best bowlers in the league should win. That's how every sport is. The best players win. I don't understand why we're in this place. Why, why are we? And it's like with the whole handicap thing. Well, you know, we want to make it to where everybody has a chance. Okay. I mean, I get that to an extent, but then you just keep moving the goalposts and you keep changing handicaps and everything over the years. Like, it just, it just when is enough enough? Like, honestly. All right, let's move on to another one. Um, I could talk about this topic for hours because I'm old enough to remember a time before modern lane machines and modern typical house shot. I'm 48. The house shot I learned was basically 38 foot flat oil stripped once a week on Mondays, dusted only and reapplied Tuesday through Sunday. If the lane man was feeling froggy, he might hand spray a crown and run the machine over top. It was basically a sport or PBA level pattern by today's standards. Even the easy houses in my area in the 90s that bowlers were looking for higher scores flocked to were still using the equivalent of easier modern sport level patterns. I don't see any problem at all with the USBC mandating a handful of league patterns. If nothing else, that would make averages mean something again, aside from just being about bragging rights. If every league used the same pattern, the USBC could figure out house difficulty ratings based on the overall house averages in one house versus a different house using the same pattern. And with USBC lane inspections returning soon, maybe we could have the mythical house handicap that golf courses have. It'll never happen, but boy, a boy can dream. Yeah, I mean, we've talked a little bit about the whole handicap system to where we kind of try to slope centers based on, you know, their flat gutter depths, their, what, you know, the type of pattern they use, the surface, the topography, all those different kinds of things. I mean, it would just be, it would be so hard to do. I think worth it in the long run because then we could have a, a fair system. <sighs> I think. Um, but as far as mandating patterns, they kind of tried that with the red, white, and blue patterns. And houses eventually came out and said, look, my bowlers don't like these patterns. And they're threatening to go down to Bob's rec bowl 
down the road if I don't go back to the house pattern because, you know, Bob Dreckbowl is going to put the easiest shot out, and that's what they want. They want to be able to shoot their honor scores, which I think is ridiculous. You know, any bowler that says they would rather, you know, have the ability to shoot or have – they want to bowl on patterns that give them – uh, that give them high honor scores and stuff. I, I don't think you're a bowler. Like, honestly, I think you just m- maybe don't bowl leagues and just go and bowl with your friends and drink beer and pizza or eat pizza or something because that's the type of bowler you are. If, you, if that's all you care about is shooting honor scores, you don't really truly care about the sport. That's just my opinion. But you can't mandate the patterns because of that. That's exactly why. Um... Uh, 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 uh. Let's see here. Lots of comments, lots of comments. I pretty much agree with what you're saying. How shot sport patterns, I believe, go hand in hand. Just bowled my second lead game as a novice. It was huge difficulty to get the hook on fresh oil. The ball just kept spinning through the pins. Crazy to think what the pros bowl on. As a beer and pizza bowler, I feel attacked with my 170 average. I play only house shots because I'm fairly new to bowling, but I do want to experience what the pros play on so I can get better. Maybe bowling... Hey, Layla. Maybe bowling centers should pick days. They let us know the oil pattern they use in a sport pattern. I mean... Dog. Here's a good point here. I think how shots can be more challenging than sport or challenge patterns because they cliff. I mean, I don't, uh, that that's spot on right there. Like that's, when there's more than three games being bowled, after four, five, six games on a house shot, like they get ridiculous. They get so super cliff that it's almost like the pattern does get harder. And some of the PBA patterns get like that too when they start with a lower or with a higher ratio pattern, like a four or five to one pattern, that there's a little bit of friction to the right and a little bit of hold in the middle. Everybody starts on top of it, like 10, 11, 12. And then as you move left, it just builds up this huge hook to the right and all that oil in the middle. It just it seems like when you move, miss to the left, your ball just goes 60 feet and you miss to the right and it overhooks. Like that's crazy. And that's what we mean by cliff. A cliff means, you know, super dry to the right. And a giant mound of oil. So there's a mound of oil and it just drops off. It, and it's a, just a cliff. It falls off the cliff, the amount of oil on the lane. And, and it just, they get so hard. I remember it was uh, what what they used to call the Proprietor's Cup. Now the Firecracker Tournament. Which I guess they're bringing back again this year. Um, that's how that would be. Because that was just rain on their typical house shot. And you'd bowl six games on fresh. And then six games on burn, I think it was. It got ridiculous. Like, I mean, you just couldn't get the ball to go through the pins because there was so much oil built up in the middle of the lane and so dry to the right. It was like you had to just kind of slow hook it. But if you got too slow, it, it would the ball would just boomerang down. It was so weird. It was just so hard, difficult. That's why the left side always ran us over at that tournament. You know, you had a lefty win that tournament like six of the first seven years or something along those lines. Um and, and it, it was obnoxious and then because the left side just doesn't break down and over cliff like that. So you can keep those angles still going through the pins. So when you're on a house shot and it's a lot of games, it's hard to beat the left side because of that. And because of that factor right there, it's already hard to beat the left side on today's modern sport patterns because, and that's one thing we, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but um, that, that has to do with the topography and stuff. I'll make another video after this talking about that because that's a really good point as well. I want to talk about the left side and why the left side is different today than what it was back in the day. Let me see if I can find another comment here that I can talk about. I think that's what's killing the game is unless you know the lane's owner or someone that is well known, you can't get a sport or challenge pattern out to practice on. People aren't willing to shell out a hundred bucks just to practice on a tougher shot. And no, you're not going to a place at all when half the field are pros, top level amateurs or college kids that bowl on that type of shot regularly. Trying to find a sports shot league during the fall is impossible. And the only time you get practice on sport patterns is in the summer. That's the issue. I think that is kind of an issue a little bit. I think centers should probably be a little bit more self-aware and maybe say, okay, we're going to run a sport pattern once a week on Wednesdays you know, from two to four in the afternoon, whatever time it may be, 
and hey, you know, all you can bowl 10 bucks or something for the two hours, you know, something along those lines, just to get people some experience. I think the good bowling centers that want to do, want to, you know, help bowlers get better would do something like that. Like, I know uh, we have a sport league on Wednesday nights at Waterford Lanes. So if you're in the area and you're looking for something new, uh, I think they've got, you know, what I think they're three man teams and they've got like 12 or 12 or 14 teams in that league. And uh, they run a different sport pattern, I think every four weeks. So they do four weeks of one pattern and it gets, it gets uh, um, easier as they go. I think, I think, right. Yeah. So they start with like a one-to-one pattern in week weeks, one through four. And then they go to a, you know, like a three to one pattern weeks, you know, five through eight or whatever it may be. And then they go up to five to one, you know, and they just or something along those lines each week. So pretty cool idea. Uh, a lot of people really like that league and a lot of those bowlers are getting a lot better, uh, especially having me there to kind of help a little bit and drill bowling balls and stuff to try to manage it a little bit. It kind of helps for sure. So but I think what my what I would say is for those who are struggling to find places to practice and stuff, you've got to find events, sweepers, things that are only 30, 40 bucks to go bowl. Um, if you truly want to get better, you just got to do what it takes. Cause that's, you know, I didn't have sport patterns to practice on either. You know, I, I practiced on league patterns. That was it until I got to college. That was it. I bought practiced on the house shop, spent all my money on all my equipment, all my money on practice during the summer and fall time when I wasn't bowling leagues. And, uh, you know, I never saw sport patterns except for when I traveled to bowl Brian Regan's events and I would travel hours. I would travel, you know, I was up from Northern Michigan, another three and a half hours North of where I'm at now. And I would travel sometimes three and a half, four hours just to go bowl one of his events that are 40 bucks to enter. And, uh, you know, my, I could only possibly make three, $400 if I crush everything. And there were a few times when I did do that, but it was just the experience alone was, was worth the trip, was worth the money. You know, I did in the long run, obviously end up making more money than I lost, but I lost money to start. Like, of course I was donating. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just trying to figure out how to get my ball to do certain things. And I was trying to control it. I was getting really good at keeping my hand up the back, you know, all those things. And that's the only true way. I don't think practicing in a house on a sport pattern is going to be much good for you anyway. I think true experience on the patterns in event is the only way to get better. You know, like you could sit there, you could bowl on a one-to-one -one pattern all day, every day for two years straight and then go bowl PBA events. And I bet you won't make a single cut because those are completely different because it's not the same because there's transition and there's choices and there's you know, uh, who you're following. There's just too many variables that get involved. I don't care how accurate you are. I don't care if you know where your ball's going. I just, none of that matters. You've got to know what ball to throw, where to throw it, when to throw it, how to throw it. You got to know everything. You got to know why you're playing certain parts of the lane. You got to know how to create room for error. You got to know layouts. Like you just need to know a lot of different things to be able to compete out there. You know, and I always use myself as an example, as someone I feel, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I feel like I, I have more knowledge than a lot of the people in the world when it comes to this game, because I've studied it for so long. Uh, and I continue to try to help other people along the way of trying to help myself get better and bowling events and watching how things progress and change and do different things. And, uh, and, you know, and I've only seen moderate success, you know, with a lot of the time that I've put into this game, um, you know, only a handful of regional titles and, you know, a second place finish on the national tour, a couple of TV shows, nothing really mind blowing for somebody I would say in my, with my caliber, I think would be, you know, pretty dang good. You'd think you'd see more success. And that just goes to show how good those guys are, you know, com competing with the best in the world. It's just a whole nother level. It's not, it's not just practice. Like you can sit there and practice all day long on these patterns and it doesn't do you any good if you don't have the experience. So um, I guess my suggestion is to just get out there and bowl as many sport tournaments as you can on these tougher patterns. If you truly want to get better, <laughs> oops, that's my kid's little monkey thing. He flies through the air. I banged on him and he made noise. <laughs> but if you truly want to get better, that's what you have to do. So all right. the biggest misconception is that you only have 
house patterns and sport patterns, but the fact that they're challenge patterns, that bridges the gap. And for all house shots being cut down to ratios in the 5 to 1 to 7 to 1, as they are still very much playable, just not as forgiving. 230 guys will luckily come down a pinch, but the 180 guys won't fall off as much. I'd agree with that. Bowled a tournament years ago on the Kegel middle of the road pattern. Enjoyed it. Ratio was 5 to 1, I believe, and it took a 223 average to win. With the top five guys being within 50 pins of each other. Nobody ran away with it. And the handicap bowler did not come uh, within 50 pins a game in average 220. It was more than fair for everybody. And I think that's kind of what my point of that initial video was. You got to find an in-between. You don't want them to be dead walled easy. And you don't want them to be super duper hard. You want them to be fair. You want them to be challenging. Hold you accountable where you miss a little bit to the right. It's not going to recover you know or you miss a little bit to the inside it's not always going to hold you got to be able to make sure you have the person with the right knowledge and the right ability does the best that's what this game is supposed to be about you know just like any other sport golf for example the person who strikes the ball the best hits it the straightest has the best short game and putts the best is going to win you know not somebody who gets lucky and hits it off the trees and somehow finds a way it on the green like that's an astronomically lucky shot that stuff doesn't happen in golf. But in bowling, you're going to have a guy that just throws it all over the lane on a house shot, has no clue where it's going, can't get within six boards of each shot, and shoot 300. That's amazing to me. And that should not be possible except at a recreation level, in my opinion. I don't think, even in league, I would like to see the league patterns be a little bit more difficult to give people just a tr more true understanding of how bowling truly should be. You know, I mean, if, if I honestly had my way, but it's not possible. Be, the lane machines have kind of screwed things up now. But if I had my way, I would just say just oil the lanes one-to-one -one, so that way accuracy truly comes into play. You know, every lane all across the world is just one-to-one. -one, certain, you know, let's call it. And you just, all you have different is just the, deep, the distance. You know, 40 feet, 38 feet, whatever it may be. Houses can choose their distance, but you oil it flat from gutter to gutter. Wouldn't be as fun because you wouldn't see but maybe a couple honor scores a year from across the world. But, you know, I mean, you should still see them, of course. And I'm sure there would be houses that would try to manipulate it a little bit. But, you know, that is what it is. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to run through some of these comments and stuff. I, I, I appreciate you guys being on and, and, and commenting on here and having the conversation. It's, it's always good to have these conversations and talk a little bit. If you haven't already, go watch that. Go give me your opinions on the uh, the Tom Clark Bolero thing. You know, do you think Tom Clark and Bolero is doing a good job for the PBA or not? Um, and go comment on that. Give me some comments over there. See what we can uh, see what we can discuss about that whole situation as well. But I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, I gotta hit the gym so and go pick up my contacts. I ran out of contacts, so I gotta go get some. So I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later.